So over the weekend, my dear old United lost 3-0 at home to Tottenham. And um, the anger from this result has subsided, obviously, because it's been, a, it's been a couple of days now since this has happened. And I think most of you guys have seen what happened. Um, my kind of match review to give, um, kind of like on the sly here, is that I was really, I was really concerned about this game from the minute one. From the first minute of the game, I was concerned by the amount of control and by the amount of dominance that Tottenham had on the ball. It felt like they were the home team. I didn't like that at all. I don't think Tottenham are that much of a scary team for us to be cowering and to have like, I think at one point in the first half, we had all of our players behind the halfway line. That is unforgivable. For me personally, it's unforgivable. But when that happened, I thought we're going to be in for a long day. But then, of course, we could Tottenham defend with a high line. We were getting a couple of chances still. So it felt like even though we weren't playing well, even though Tottenham were dominating possession, even though they were battering us in terms of chances created and the ways that they were kind of, you know, moving us around the pitch, the way that they were able to progress the ball up, up the pitch with really clean and precise passes and sometimes not even looking at who they were passing to, passing into space, the player would be there, creating chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. I feel like we still had a chance in the game because of Tottenham's high line. And we could exploit that with the addition of Garnacho and obviously Fernandes. Sorry, um, Rashford playing on the wings. That didn't happen, of course. And by the time they scored the first goal, it felt like our heads already dropped. No real reaction. Um, nothing really happened. And if anything, Tottenham kind of like saw out the first half pretty easily. And then, of course, the moment of madness from Bruno Fernandes, which obviously wasn't a red card. But I'm also glad to see our fan base. Bless our fan base. We are... Um, there's a lot of difference of opinion within our fan base. I feel like a lot of the fans that go to the games can sometimes be a little bit um, destruct. Uh, no. They can little, they can be. De no, I won't say they're destructive, but I think they can be negative in terms of their toxic positivity. But God bless the fans in general. No real. F I'm not seeing many fans online who are saying that the Bruno Fernandez red card was a deciding factor of the game. Most fans are being sensible and saying, no, we were losing before Bruno Fernandes got sent off. We were not playing well. We looked hopeless. Bruno Fernandes hardly touched the ball. He looked terrible too when he was on the ball. So I'm glad to see a lot of our fans didn't buy into the easy sort of like scapegoat, the easy excuse that Bruno Fernandes get sent off at the 42nd minute was the reason why we lost the match. It wasn't. Because when the second half started, I thought we were going to come out of the blocks fast. I thought we were going to try and put pressure on Tottenham. I thought we were going to try to exert some level of control in the midfield. And then what happened as soon as we started the first half? Again, many gaps in the play, many gaps in the, in, in the defence. No one really taking any ownership of defending anything. Um, whatever, just no, no compactness, just all over the place. And then again, Tottenham scored the second goal by Dejan, Stank Sorry, Dejan Kul Kulusevski. And by that point, the game was over. A wrap. Whatever happened after that didn't really matter. Um... But again, the most concerning thing for me, I think overall, is that from the back to the front, maybe with the session of Onana, who played decently, I feel like this match, probably his best game for United, I feel like, oddly enough, especially with the ball at his feet, I feel like he did a couple of good balls throughout the entirety of the game, that I feel like reminded you why we actually signed him, because I feel like as a shop stopper, he's pretty average, personally, for me, but I feel like with the ball at his feet, we haven't really seen the best of him, but I feel like against Tottenham, he actually played pretty decently, but I feel like from the back to the front, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about how we're utilising our inverted sort of fullbacks. I'm concerned about the amount of space that gets left whenever Dallo runs forward. I'm concerned about the partnership between Lissandra Martinez and fucking De Litt. Um, I said it many a times on social media, but I feel like De Litt is kind of looking like a Dutch Phil Jones. He's all over the place positionally. He does too many of those last gasp hero sort of like tackles all over the place. He doesn't look that great on the ball. Lissandra Martinez is also looking very shaky in defence good on the ball but when it comes to defending you know when it comes to marking a player when it comes to maybe getting in front of his defender it's just not there for me at the moment he's just turning into a bit of a bully and just winning fouls by being aggressive but not really kind of getting the ball and being dominant as it was in the past the midfield combination I don't really know what the fuck Eric Hag was thinking by playing that particular midfield um, I feel like most of us were concerned the moment he didn't the moment he played Ericsson during the week I think most of us knew it was unlikely he was going to play Ericsson during this game in the weekend. But I just feel like, in general, this combination was never going to work. 
the Maino and Ugarte as a double pivot doesn't really make much sense because I personally think Maino prefers to play further forward. So if you're going to play Maino, you have to play him in the Bruno Fernandes position. But for some reason, Bruno Fernandes can't ever get subbed or changed. So you have to always fit this fucking rat face cunt into the team. So that particular midfield combination doesn't make any sense. So the likely and the obvious kind of choice would be to start Ugarte and fucking Casemiro. Because at least Casemiro is a lot better on the ball than Ugarte. He's not fantastic, but he's better on the ball than him. So at least you have two combative defensive midfielders. You have one that can offer you a, a threat on set pieces and one that can also score goals and one that can also pass a bit better. And then you have maybe Maino playing there or Eriksen playing in that Bruno Fernandes position, but it didn't happen. So you have Bruno Fernandes playing and then throughout the entirety of the game, I feel like there was a period where Bruno Fernandes played like on the right wing for some reason. I was like, what's happening there? Then Gansha played off of Zerski. Then Zerski hardly touched the ball. Then Rashford was all over the place. Gansha was terrible as per usual. And then dropping Ahmad. Like, why? Ahmad might be our best player this season so far. I don't think that's, you know, a stretch to say. And at the moment now, given our inability to keep the ball, he's one of our best players in possession. Just play him every game until he plays crap. Then drop him. But this rotating of Ahmad easily or subbing Ahmad first, like because I've noticed it as well, he always subs Ahmad before he subs Rashford, even if Rashford's playing worse. And it's like, bro, just like have... The, like this lack of like meritocracy in this team this inability to reward players who play well is really i think causing a problem in this club because i'm you know i haven't played at a high level i played that shitty fucking sunday league level at hackney marshes and shit big up the hackney marshes massive but i'm sure most of you guys know how bad it feels when you're playing for a team where the manager has favorites it's not a good feeling when you're going to pay subs during the especially if you're paying subs you're actually paying to train you're paid to play football during the week, to train. You put in a good performance and you feel like that performance should maybe help you start the game on the weekend and the manager keeps playing the same player that played shit the previous week. That doesn't create a good atmosphere in the, in the change room or in the fucking team overall because what's the point of trying in training if the manager's going to be picking the same player? And I feel like at the moment, some people would argue there are players who are basically undroppable. I would maybe agree with you. But I don't, I don't. I think in general, when it comes to sports, you can't ever have a player be undroppable. If a player plays himself to a level where they're undroppable, fair enough. But a player can't be undroppable week in, week out. They have every player has to earn their right to play, because then that creates competition for places. Competition for places then creates better standards of like play overall, and obviously that creates more of ability or more of an option, more of a possibility for the team to win games because they're all going to be chomping at the bit to perform and to play at their skins because they know the person on the bench is frothing at them after play and when they get a chance to play they're not going to fucking let that go easily but at the moment we got a player on the t we got like two players in Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes who for some reason can do no wrong with this manager we're not playing well anyway we're a mid-table club at the moment and he still can't rotate them like what's what's going to give what's going to give what's going to give at what point is enough is enough at what point because we are, we're at this point now where some people are saying, oh, let's wait until the Porto game. Let's wait until the Porto game. Let's wait until after Aston Villa. And I'm like, why would you wait for two games? Why would two games change how you feel about this manager? I would much rather the club or the fans who are still on the fence about Eric Ten Hag just say, give them until the end of the season, blankly. That's a terrible way to go because I feel like most top clubs will never give a manager a blank sort of like, hey, you've got until this month to get it right because you have to earn your right to, you know, you have to earn your keep basically. Match after match after match, match week after match week after match week. But I'd much rather the club just say that than say, oh, it's going to take two games. Because what will we learn differently about this club and about where we're going under Eric Ten Hag, away at Porto and away at Aston Villa? What are we going to learn differently? Because so far, this season has been what we expected it to be. It's, it started the same way the last season kind of ended, with the accession of the FA Cup win. The same way. Just terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And forget the style of play conversation. My main issue I have with this particular manager is that even with all the money spent, over 600 fucking million spent, all of his own players, every player he doesn't want in the club is gone. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo, gone. Jaden Sancho, gone. Every player he doesn't want, Donny Van der Beek, all these players that he didn't want anymore, gone. 
We, he's cold the entire squad. Every player that's still there is the one that he wants to keep there. The problem for me is that even with all of his signings, with all the players going out, he still doesn't know what his best team is. He still doesn't know what his best starting 11 is. After three fucking years, he still doesn't know what his best team is. He still doesn't know the players to trust. He still doesn't know his best midfield combination, his best defensive partnership, his best striker, his best attacking options or attacking combinations, his best fucking wing forwards, whatever. It has no clue. No clue. And here we are, figuring shit out still at the moment. Figuring shit out. Are we a counter second side? Are we possession based? Are we transition? Are we this? Are we that? Who fucking knows? And now everyone looks terrible. Even Kobe Minor, one of the best bright sparks about the end of last season, now is looking really bad. He's looking like he's run out of gas already. He's looking like we're already run like we're ready run into the ground. Kobe Maynard, Ugarte after three matches already, he's looking average. Everyone's questioning that signing. After three matches, before he joined, he was meant to be our saviour. Now after three matches, everyone's talking about him like he's a donkey. It's absolutely, in, like, I wish we could change all of our players and start again from scratch. Not going to happen. I wish we could get rid of the Glazers and have new owners. Not going to happen. So the only way we can really change things going forward, affect it in the immediate, is to change our manager and change it quickly. But at the moment, that's not going to happen because United never move quickly when it comes to managers. We have this weird sort of like idealistic, you know, romantic vision of managers because of our time with Alex Ferguson, which I feel like has spoiled us as a club. We've been spoiled because we felt like because Alex Ferguson was one of the greatest managers to ever live and because we had like more than two decades of absolute dominance with him under, you know, with under his tenure, we feel like every manager should be that. We should aim to have every manager emulate that. That's not the case. It's not the case. Most clubs don't have that. It does not. Football history doesn't show you that. Most clubs figure it out by hiring and firing, hiring and firing. In the time that we've had Eric Ten Hag, Chelsea have had three managers. Now they're suddenly figuring it out. That's no coincidence. They had to hire and fire, hire and fire to suddenly get to where they are now. Okay, cool. Mareska's our guy. He's called a he's called a squad properly. He signed some players. Here's what we are about. Whereas we are still fucking figuring this shit out. And we still want to give this guy time. Fuck the time. Ericsson Hogg out. He should have never got that year anyway. He should have never been in this job right now. He got the job in a technicality. Um, I think the, oh, the, the the partial owners at Enios are now basically, you know, putting distance between them and saying, hey, we didn't want this guy. But it's clear he should have never, ever started this season. Ever. No one could ever say... A United manager who finished eighth in the league should ever get the chance to go back again, especially in their second season. I'm sorry, you can't do that. It's impossible. Your first season, it's impossible. I'm sorry, no. So the fact that he still has his job is crazy, and the fact that we're still waiting to sack him is fucking insane. But the update here, courtesy of Man United on the fucking um, Twitter, is that we are looking at a manager. We had this tweet here the, the other day where Ericsson Hart came in the next again performative shit. Came in allegedly the next day, 3, 7 30 in the morning. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, you're a terrible manager. Get the fuck out of our fucking club. You've got Mason Mount here, um, letting us know that he's all good. It's just a scratch because he went off injured and he was looking upset because he had a big, you know, I think he, he went up for a header or something and somebody elbowed him in the back. Who gives a fuck? And his head was bleeding. Again, another nonsense signing. 60 million or something. Number seven jersey. Hardly plays. We don't know what his best position is. Just picking up a check and just, like, again, like, you, you, I think a lot of football conversation in this country is very much dictated by race. It shouldn't be, but it, sh it is. Because if, if Mason Mount was black and he wasn't playing and he got the 60 million transfer fee and a number seven jersey and he plays the way he does or he doesn't play the way he does, this country, talk sport, the fucking tabloids will be all over him. But because he looks the way he does, he doesn't get that same level of treatment. It's fucking crazy. But again, useless signing, get him out of our club. Another another um, update here, courtesy of of Twitter, Man United Space. It says here, while the pressure on Ericsson Hogg is clearly mounting, Man United hierarchy are will always consider such situations carefully rather than making a decision immediately after a bad result. But this is not a decision that you're making immediately after a bad result. This is a this is a continuation of last season. This isn't like an I said incident. This is a continuation from last season. We are being embarrassed. In the league, we're being embarrassed in our country. We're being embarrassed in Europe. And this underneath this manager. 
and no one can say it's the players because we signed all the right players allegedly. Uh, do, do people think that these players are bad enough to be mid table? I don't think so. Are they good enough to win the league? Clearly not. But are they bad enough to be mid table? No. They're probably about top six level. So the fact that we're not in the top six and we're mid table now, I think we might be eleventh or twelfth, is a is more of a reflection on the manager. You can't get us to play good football. Get the fuck out of the fucking club. It's not that hard. News about Simone and Zaghi. Okay, whatever. Um, let's skip that one. And I think one of the one of the greatest things here is this sort of statement, which is the main reason why we haven't sacked him. Basically, it would cost United seventeen point five million to sack Ten Hag now. So more than likely, last season when he should have got sacked, let's say it would have cost us twenty five million. This is the main reason why he hasn't been sacked. That tells you everything about this club. We're more worried about not spending money, getting rid of a manager that's going to cost us spending more money down the line. Because the worse we are, right, the more likelihood we're going to have to sign more players to fix how bad we are or to sign a manager and pay more of a salary to get us back where we think we should be. So if you actually sack him earlier, you end up spending less money down the line. But this team, this club is so short-sighted, it's so fucking finicky with the money, they'd rather not sack him, keep him, bleed out slowly, but then spend more trying to fix a problem down the line. It's like, okay, cool, whatever. What do I know? I'm just an idiot talking out of my room. We continue. Um, United are not... Cons and then the, obviously the, the most sacking, the most shocking thing and upsetting thing has been this update. United are not currently considering sacking Eric Ten Hag. There are no conversations about this at the moment. Which I think is very concerning. Because there should be conversation about this. During, considering our start to the season. Considering the way that we're playing. Considering the mood at the club. Considering how horrible our signings look. Considering all of the good vibes and positivity from the summer is completely dissipated. Or sorry, evaporated. It should be a concern that we're not looking at alternatives. That's a big concern. Because how bad does it have to get? Do we have to lose... 5-0 away at Porto, 5-0 away at Aston Villa for them to suddenly figure out we have to make a change. Why does it have to do why do they have to get that way? Why do we have to wait until that time for us to make a change? Why can't we make a change now and maybe fix things? Why wait until Christmas? Why wait until the new year? Why not make a change now? It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't make any sense. It continues. Um and one more couple more updates here. Obviously, this is one of the most scary updates you've ever seen in your life Graham Southgate, Gareth Southgate sorry, and Graham Potter are likely to be considered for the job if Ayrton Hart gets sacked <laughs> honestly Gareth Southgate Gareth fucking Southgate I swear to god right if we hire Gareth Southgate I'm not watching a United game ever again if we hire Gareth Southgate, I am not watching another United game ever again. I swear to God. I'm not watching a single one. I will fucking boycott the club completely. I'm not watching them ever again. If we hire that absolute cancer of football, if we hire that, I'm not, I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it ever again. Ever fucking again. Given the options available out there now, I am not watching us under fucking Gareth Southgate. I swear to fucking God. I'm not doing it. But knowing this club, it's likely because Gareth Southgate's name has been linked to a club for a long time. We've been linked with Gareth Southgate for a long fucking time. Even last season, Gareth Southgate's name was fucking floated. So it feels like that Gareth Southgate rumor isn't for nothing. There's some meat on the bone on that Gareth Southgate rumor. There are some people in this club who legitimately feel like Gareth Southgate is the guy. And I don't know why. I don't know what they see in this guy. I really don't know. Because we've seen what he's been able to do with England. We've seen what he's able to do with some of the best talent in this country. His selections, his tactics, the style of play. Like, I don't know why any 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 fan would have any confidence in Gareth Southgate being our manager. And did he get Middlesbrough relegated anyway before that? In his club in his club career. Didn't he get fucking Middlesbrough relegated? It's like, bro, what where are our where are our where are our fucking standards? Where are they? Somebody tell me where our standards are. That we're going to be hiring Gareth Southgate as our fucking manager. But, again, I'm not surprised. So, let's see Wagwan. 
Um, United keep fucking frustrating me. Nothing fucking keeps changing. It is the same thing again and again and again. And um, yeah, man, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it fucking goes. No change soon. No change anytime soon. I'm pretty sure of it. But again, what do I know? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing.